This is the Go for Launch podcast. The Go for Launch podcast is sponsored by Lead Pages will help you test your business concept even before you have a website. After proving some success, you can keep using it to drive traffic and build your email list. To learn more and sign up, visit leadpageslaunch.com. Today's guest is David Summerfleck. David owns and operates suddenimpactwebdesign.com and denverweb.us. He is a branding expert, social media strategist, developer, entrepreneur, and trainer who's focused on business development and internet marketing. David has more than 20 years of marketing, branding, and PR experience. He's a former teacher, professor, and journalist with a strong background in positioning, project management, integrated marketing, new product launches, website development, and online community management. Now, David's goal is to inspire and encourage business owners and entrepreneurs while giving them the tools needed to successfully build their overall ventures both online and offline through workshops, mentorship, online courses, and one-on-one consultations. He enjoys learning new languages, practicing Aikido, and hiking in his spare time, which I'm sure he does a lot in the Denver area. David, welcome to the podcast. Well, uh, thank you for having me, Brandon. I hope you're doing well today. Definitely. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm having the visions of the Rocky Mountains. And uh, <laughs> good news, yeah, family's actually flying out to Denver this summer. We're planning yes. a big epic trip to Yellowstone and points northward. So we're going to start in Denver, and we'll we'll spend a day in your fair city, and then go start driving north from that point. Yeah, well, sounds good. I hope you uh, visit Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I, I think that's probably the the you know the best park. Okay. Yeah, um, we're we're just excited to to be heading out that way. Um, the mountains are slightly larger there than they are in North Carolina, for sure. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been to the Carolinas. I grew up in. Uh, in Virginia. All right. Well, let's uh, talk about your background a little bit, David, and tell us how you got started as an entrepreneur. Sure. Um, basically, I graduated from college um, with a degree in English with an emphasis in creative writing. So my background was always in very creative endeavors. You know, in college, I had a journalism scholarship and I was in the theater programs and I even took a few acting classes. Um, just to kind of get out of my shell. Now, later after that, um, you know, I really, you know, always, you know, I've, I've worked for several agencies. Um, my first job out of college really was a reporter for several different mid-level uh, newspapers, but I realized pretty quickly that um, having all that background in creative endeavors, you know, creative writing and poetry and theater and and so on. I really didn't know very much about business. And that and I realized from watching friends and and actors and you know all the different creative uh, people that I socialized with, I realized that that was something I needed to learn about um, if I wanted to move forward with things. Gotcha. So, So when did you start your first business? Yeah, my first business was about maybe six or seven years ago, and um, I've always been interested in the law. Um, and um, when I was in college, you know, I'd taken one or two uh, law overview courses, um, but really couldn't get into law school. I really didn't want to at that time. But so my first business was a, actually a nonprofit mediation business to help everybody basically from the you know uh, business owner to the average person with a marital issue child custody what have you so that was my first business and I started that with my brilliant wonderful beautiful wife that lasted for about two years and it was so stressful um, and I just realized one day I just sat and thought, you know, this isn't really fun. You know, I, I love legal, legal things. I love the law, but it's really not enjoyable listening to all these divorces and all these horrible 
you know, stories. And I just thought, what is it that I really love to do that, um, you know, I have some background in that my English background can kind of reinforce that I'll always love doing no matter what. And I just thought, you know what, I've always loved web design. And I've always loved, uh, you know, internet marketing, web technology. I've just always loved it. And uh, that was it. I started Sudden Impact Web Design about five years ago now, I think. What made you gravitate toward web design? Had you self-taught in terms of putting yeah. stuff together? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, and it's a good question, too. Thank you. <laughs> You're keeping me in line. Uh, you know, when I was in college, I just, I got... You know, I'm studying Chaucer and Shakespeare and Keats and, you know, and on and on. And I found that to relax, you know, before exams and what have you, I was studying, I was reading HTML. And for me, it was fun. It was like Sudoku, you know. So I'd read uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript and everything uh, just to kind of help me unwind. And David, has I, anybody ever told you you're like completely weird in that regard? No, I'm yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. Uh, I just I couldn't read. You know, I would read Stephen King or whatever, you know, for fun, and I just I couldn't read things without analyzing it. Even today, I'm the same way. I mean, if I sit down and I watch a movie with my wife or whatever, I'll, you know, I'll completely ruin it. And just well, the the arc, the dramatic arc did it. Uh, you know, work for me or the character's motivations. Um, you know, it, it, the, the plot didn't have my willing suspension of disbelief. Uh, I, I thought the plot could have been better constructed. The motivations weren't, you know, weren't that believable for me. They missed out on these other elements that they should have put in. It got to be very hard for me to really, you know, read uh, without analyzing it. But yeah, yes, I am weird in that regard. <laughs> So you were you liked HTML and you were dabbling in that, but how did that turn into an actual business? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I started putting together basic HTML sites for other students that I knew who wanted to be actors and uh, filmmakers and uh, writers, copywriters, editors, freelancers. So I started using HTML to put together, you know, basic websites. I mean, if I were to look at them now. They're not in my portfolio. They, you know, they they did not look anything like what you would see today. Um, back then, we had page kits, you know, where we would use the work of a graphic artist to put together basic websites, and that's how I basically got started. Um, probably around 1998, and I really didn't feel that um, I was good enough that I could really fairly charge a business owner or even approach a business owner. Um, one day there was a lady who approached me at a networking group and, um, she came up to me and just said, Hey, you know, I've got this website. I hired someone on uh, Elance or Odesk and somebody in China or Russia, they built this website for me too, for $200. And now I can't do anything with it. They won't return my phone calls. I don't know what to do. You seem like, you know, about this web stuff. Could you help me? And I said, you know what, I'll make you a deal. If you let me nuke the database and start over from scratch, I'll do it for you for, you know, a little bit more than what you paid the other person. Sure. But, but um, you know, I'll do something that you can be proud of. Is that a good deal? She said, yes, it is. And she was my first official client. Okay. And uh, and you say you've been doing this for about five or six years? And uh, Yes, officially as a business, yes. We're uh, registered with the Colorado Secretary of State, uh, the Denver and Boulder Better Business Bureau. Um, and it's very, very important to me uh, because, as you might imagine, you hear stories from people all the time in networking groups and chamber of commerce meetings, um, so many uh, bad experiences from people you know, working with freelancers or what have you on Craigslist and Odesk and, and Guru or whatever. Uh, so it's really important to me um, that they see the client see whether they're interested in it or not. It's very important to me to see real references or testimonials from real verifiable sources that, you know, I'm registered with the Secretary of State. This is serious to me. This is a real endeavor. 
Does that mean, David, that most of your clients are in that Denver area, or do you work with companies all over the place? I'll work with anybody uh, anywhere in the world, um, but most are local. Um, you know, yeah, but I, I have worked with uh, some people in uh, other countries, but most of my clients thus far um, have come local. I see. I think that's pretty common because yeah. my first business also was a web design firm. And yeah. for the first several years, the majority of our clients not only were local, but also primarily referrals from other clients. And it was only when we reached a certain uh, point of technical expertise and so forth that we started getting clients outside the the Charlotte area. But I think that's very common for people. And, and as you were saying, David, one of the reasons is because when people are spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a website design, it kind of helps them with their comfort level to be able to go and meet with you in person at least once yes. or twice, you know, and yeah, yeah. they don't have to sit and watch over your shoulder the entire time. But I think that's the case with a lot of service businesses, don't you? Yes, it's very, very true. Um, I, yeah, I actually have yeah, had one or two clients who do want to sit behind your shoulder and look over everything. Um, but that's, that's not the way yeah, to do I don't, Those are the worst clients, in my opinion. I can't stand you know, those types uh, of people that are just so uh, yeah. micromanaging. It's awful. And, and I, yeah, and I, and I think a lot of it comes from a lack of understanding of what you're doing or how you're working or an unfamiliarity with the process. Um, you know, you wouldn't go to uh, your dentist and, you know, and, and micromanage your dentist or ask the mechanic, you know, well, I want you to use my tools or, you know, can I watch how you do this? Um, so I, I think a lot of it just has to do with an unfamiliarity with Internet marketing and web design as a whole. I've heard so many uh, horror stories from, uh, you know, clients and just people, like I said, at Chamber of Commerce meetings and networking groups that I go to. And it's really, I mean, quite honestly, it's really the reason that I started the business in the first place and went through all the trouble of registering it with the Secretary of State and paying taxes and and so on, as opposed to just doing it as a freelancer. Uh, because it was just, I had heard so many of these negative experiences from people that I just said, you know what, I'm going to, it's going to be like Batman. Basically, I'm going to use your stories as uh, inspiration uh, for me to do it the right way. You yes. Know? And one thing you said, David, is really important. And that is to set expectations with the client, whether yeah. you're doing web design or accounting work or some sort of a coaching practice yeah. or what have you. I think that education, educating the client specifically is extremely important in the early stages because you want to make sure they understand what the process is going to look like, what your responsibilities and roles are going to be what their responsibilities and roles are going to be and when you're going to need them in the process and when you will not need them in the process, right? Yes. Yeah. And I can honestly tell you, um, those are the most important factors to probably any business, but you know, now that it's been five or six years that I've been doing this as a business processes, procedures, um, those are the most important things because, you know, I'm not Walt Disney or, you know, whomever when it comes to web design, you know, there are limits to what, you know, I could do technically, but there's no limit to how organized I can be, how structured I can be, how honest I can be with a client. Um, you know, so if there's something technically that, you know, a client may want or something I could you know, I can put processes in place to get things done, but I think those processes and that structure is so critical. I mean, even if I do a podcast, if um, if I do a video, um, and you can probably already tell this by just talking to me so far, I'll ramble. So if I don't have an outline in front of me when I do a podcast, I'll take an outline to the wall. If I'm doing uh, a Skype chat with a customer or client, I'll put an outline as to what we need to go over right in front of me. Um, if I meet with a, a client, 
or we talk on the phone, I'll have an outline in front of me. Um, if you contact me, if you go to Sudden Impact Web Design, or if you go to my other site, Denver Web, I have that contact form. And a lot of people don't like it because it will take you five minutes or so to fill out. But those processes and that structure is so critical to everything that you do. And, you know, you have to do it, whether you're an accountant or any, you know, any kind of service. And when you go to the doctor, you go to the dentist or your mechanic, they're service professionals, just like we are. But they have processes in place that are just so um, so institutionalized or so much, so well established, you don't even think about it. That's you, right. But, you know, you know, like you said, you can't make those assumptions because, for example, you mentioned auto mechanics. And it, and it really strikes me that for, for decades, probably, the, uh, the customer has been trained, really, to understand that they deal with the counter service representative, but they, yeah. don't, but they don't go behind the counter into, right. into the automotive workplace, right? Whereas in a web development shop or an accounting firm, sometimes they just waltz in and expect to be able to stand over your shoulder. So, you, you, again, it's incumbent on you, the professional, to set those expectations up front. Have That's those, right. Have those early meetings before you're ever doing any web design, you know, putting the pixels to paper, if you will, or pic- pixels to screens, because you want them to understand this is how it's going to flow. We're going to show you designs first. These are not going to be uh, to scale necessarily. They may not be the right colors, They, you know, and, and all this, but you don't need to be freaking out at that moment. You know, I've had those moments where people see that first design and just go, oh, my gosh, you know, that's an exact, not exactly what I want. And we're like, well, hold on a second. Well, we've got more, but this is the first of three or however. Mm-hmm. But they have to understand how, how, the, how the flow is going to go because otherwise if you, the professional, don't take charge – and give them that process, it'll get out of control. And then you're right. behind the eight ball and you're suddenly losing money, doing stuff that you are not proud of. You're, you're probably groveling, you know, and doing work that you are not going to really think is representative of your skill set. And, and that, that's terrible when you're in that position where you start just doing the work just to appease the client and get them off your back. That's right. not the best work for anybody. Right. And, and it, yeah, and, and the processes, the structure, when you hear from clients or business owners or what have you, and they've had these horror stories and these negative experiences, you know, it took me a while to realize it's not necessarily that they're bad people or that they're trying to do anything wrong. And, you know, because a lot of times they'll contact me and they're angry. They're very resentful. They're angry. They've had a bad experience. Um, but in almost all cases, it's because they worked with someone prior to me. Not that I'm perfect by any means, but the person they worked with previously didn't have the structure or processes in place. They took a very um, unstructured, uh, kind of haphazard approach. Now, when I work with clients, I'll tell them, I want you to give me uh, two similar sites that you like because they have to be willing to accept some of the onus, some of the responsibility, you know, um, or you can just give it all to me and say, Hey, David, you know what? I, I, I trust you based on what I see in your portfolio. I want you to do what you think is best. I've had that once or twice and it's great. And you, you know, you clap your hands, you can't believe it, but usually I'll tell the client, look, I want you to pick two, you know, competitor sites or similar sites that you like um, the, you know, tell me what it is about them that you like. Tell me what it is about them you don't like. Um, and I'll do something in the middle, in between those two. And then once we begin working, I'll show you the, my rough draft. And uh, like you said, you know, this is a rough draft. Colors, fonts, some of these elements can be changed. Um, you know, and so we're going to kind of work within these parameters. We're not going to, you know, there are only three revisions that we're going to make now if after those three revisions you're still unhappy or something then we need to regroup right you know well let, me, it, let me ask you for a second about your your love of wordpress david because sure. you look like you um really probably prefer that for your best platform when developing websites why do you like wordpress so much yeah um you know i since I started with HTML and looking at CSS and all 
coding. This, I wasn't familiar with content management systems, and I just kept thinking there's got to be a better way than putting together HTML and these page kits and, you know, spending weeks, I mean, literally weeks to make a basic website with the page kits and moving images around pixel by pixel. So I just started looking at uh, content management systems, which for anyone who doesn't know, a content management system is like the motor of a website that allows it to function in a smooth uh, way. And uh, I looked at Joomla, I looked at Drupal, those are the other top two players. And I just looked at them and just said, this is a very steep learning curve. This is gonna take me a while to really acclimate to, to the point where I feel comfortable. And I looked at WordPress and just said, you know what, this is something that, you know, since I'm already used to programming somewhat, I could really jump into it right away um, and start moving things around and just start, you know, working immediately within seconds. Um, I couldn't do that with the other content management systems. Now, the good thing about WordPress and why it is number one on the planet Earth today is because a non-technical person can jump in right away, start doing things. A programmer can work much quicker, I think, using it. Now, the bad thing about it is that it looks so deceptively easy and you have a lot of people writing things. Anybody can make a website now using WordPress. Anybody can do this. And there's so many freelancers, uh, you know, filling up the market um, who don't have structure in place, who don't have experience. And um, I think the bad thing about WordPress is that it is so popular, but that's also one of the good things about it, which is a, a long answer to your question. But they have the forms in place they've got the plug-in architecture they've got the support um, in there that uh, so many other content management systems don't have to that extent so that's why i like it so much and i've stuck with it there's nothing i can't do technically with wordpress yeah there's, i love it there's, too yeah. There's no, I mean, if you're a customer or client and you call me up, there's nothing that you could possibly tell me that you want that I can't do. That's right. Us, the, using it. So, yeah, I would rather be a master of one than be kind of so-so with other content management systems or say, hey, I know Joomla and Drupal and WordPress, but I'm kind of so-so on every one of them. I'd rather be able to say to you, yes, I'm the master of this or very proficient in it, you know, that there's really nothing I can't do in it. It's just always a matter of time and budget. Yes. Well, I always caution people if they're talking to a developer and they don't do WordPress or they try to push yes. them in the direction of Drupal or Joomla or these other systems. Like you said, David, I mean, so many developers are out there that are proficient at WordPress. What I tell people is, Go with that because if if something happens with your original developer, no worries. You can take that somewhere else. You know, you can move it to a different server fairly easily, and you'll have lots of other people who can jump in and look at the code and start to make adjustments. Whereas, you know, if you're working with something proprietary or or with a lot less of a developer base, you're going to be screwed in many cases. Yeah, I'm 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 really. I mean, I don't know how to say it, but I'm re I, I'm really against a lot of the do-it-yourself types of things because I get so many calls from people who have broken websites or, as we used to say in Virginia, jacked up websites, um, you know, that, that don't work as they should or, or something happened and or, or the customer wants to make some changes and they can't. And I'm just... Well, so many people are using frameworks as opposed to creating their own themes without getting too technical. Um, and it just creates a lot of bad experiences for the customer. So I think for the business owner listening to this, what I would really want to say to them is whoever you decide work to work with, always make sure that your web developer uses WordPress because it is number one in the world. There's no reason for them not to. And always make sure that your web developer has clear, verifiable 
references or testimonials from you know at least four or five people they have some credentials behind them they're registered with the secretary of state wherever they may live or their local uh better business bureau there's no reason not to do that it doesn't cost anything to be registered with your local bbb uh registering with your secretary of state is very very minimal but it shows a level of commitment and organization that you know and they want to make sure that you're happy uh to maintain that good standing um you know you can work with freelancers and they'll offer to do a website for you for the cost of a meal out but you won't have the results that you really need which are is your phone ringing are more people coming into your store is your business uh accelerating and that's really what a website should be doing that's right so, you really you know in addition to those um, certifications or stamps of approval like the Better Business Bureau, you definitely yeah. need to you know look closely at the portfolio and ask for references or just go directly to the portfolio companies that you see listed on a on a web developer's site and ask them point blank, were you happy? Were you satisfied? But um, yeah. so much goes into it. David, I want to ask you one last question, which if you think about the 80-20 principle, you know, if you were to have 20 spend 20 percent of your time doing a certain amount of activities to get 80 percent of the results yeah when it comes to internet marketing these days what would your 20 percent of your time be spent doing oh boy um you know <laughs> it's a, it's a, I know, you got you got S, a, you got search engine optimization, social media, content yeah, marketing, public relations. I got it. You know, I mean, I got to tell you, Brandon, I, I can't say like one thing or the other. It's not really a, a this or that kind of answer. Yeah, but that's fair to, to, But but to give you a, a direct answer, I what one of the things I've learned from from watching other people uh, like Chris Lima, who's big with the WordPress community and other people go back and forth. So if you have, if you have a business like mine, half of your time should be going into products, making podcasts, making videos, teaching courses online, uh, coming up with products and then going back to the service. So, you know, I think what would I have done differently if I could go back in time is I probably would have made more products before starting my business and really thinking about it a little bit more in terms of branding, uh, picking the domain name, um, you know, and making more products and teaching more online courses, getting that structured and organized more. Because as it is now, I've got so much content, I don't know what to do with it. So, you know, I've got my website and I'm currently in the process of rebooting it, kind of redesigning it because there is so much content. Um, you know, so making it very, very easy and fast for the customer or the, 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 the general consumer, the public to look at and find what they want, but also having so much there. So if I could do it over again, I probably would look at the pacing and everything, the organization a little bit differently. As it is now, I've got clients, but I also want to develop some courses online and, and write more ebooks and, and that kind of thing. Definitely. Well, we've been talking with David Summerfleck of Sudden Impact Web Design in DenverWeb.us. David, where can we find more about your services online? All you got to do is just go to Google and type in Sudden Impact Web Design. Um, visit me at SuddenImpactWebDesign.com. Um, and, you know, if you're local, I've got DenverWeb.us. Uh, it's both the same company, but they're different experiences. Um and uh, I've got a thousand videos on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, type in Sudden Impact Web Design. Um, just so much content out there and more coming soon. Terrific. Well, thanks so much, David, for sharing your knowledge and expertise on how to find a web developer. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for talking to me, Brandon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Go for Launch podcast. If you like what you heard, I'd appreciate your sharing the show on social media. And be sure to subscribe so you'll get each new episode when it comes out. Just go to goforlaunch.io slash iTunes. And I would be so grateful if you would leave a rating on iTunes also. It really makes a difference in helping more people discover the show. Until next week, 
I wish you all the best in launching and growing your business.